Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Truth Wanted. I'm your host, Objectively Dan. This is the live call-in show that happens every single week, Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time, where we talk about what people believe and why. And every week I have a special guest. This week is Dallas Wade. Dallas Wade, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, we just had a pretty bad scare. <laughs> um, my internet decided to go out about 12 minutes to live, and uh, I thought I hadn't paid my internet or something. Nope, checked my bill. It was all good. Reset my modem. Still wasn't working. We had uh, uh, somebody else who will be coming up later on the show, actually, not this episode, but later in the future as a guest, uh, was about to take over as host tonight. But right before we went live like we got it working so we're here we're clear we're ready to go uh dallas welcome to truth wanted dallas is a uh youtuber uh you are an atheist and you make skeptic content but you 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 talk about a lot of different things actually what what are some of the things you talk about on your channel i i just enjoy all things spiritual and um supernatural so like lately um i've been diving into the paranormal um it's something i've wanted to do for a long time now and i just finally took the opportunity um all of october has been um in honor of spooky season and I've been doing yeah. all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff I, I just never got into uh before mostly because i used to be religious and so all of that stuff was satanic and demonic so i didn't touch it and then yeah. after that i was a skeptic and i was like well you know all that stuff is you know that's bs i, I don't want to mess with that and so I just went my whole life, 25 years, with never touching a Ouija board, never, you know, uh, trying to um, invoke some sorts of spirits. And so I'm just going for it um, and having a lot of fun. Yeah, like literally two hours before this episode right <laughs> here. Um, the, the guys are messing with me here by changing my name. Uh, they, uh, like two hours before this uh, thing of truth wanted, you uploaded a video to your channel of you doing uh, the Three Kings challenge, which I had never yeah. heard of. What is that? So the Three Kings ritual or the Three Kings game, it's um, it's it's kind of like uh, the Bloody Mary challenge on a, a more grandiose level. Um, so it's from the subreddit r slash Three Kings. It was originally um, the recipe for the Three Kings ritual was posted in r slash no sleep, which is a, a paranormal uh, spooky subreddit where people mm -hmm. share scary stories and just anything that's going to, you know, uh, keep you up at night. You know, uh, so somebody shared uh, the Three Kings ritual on there and it blew up. And so all of the top posts on that subreddit were just Three Kings. So they ended up making their own subreddit which is r slash three kings but now it's just dedicated to people sharing all sorts of uh crazy um some of them claim to be thousands of years old rituals that are supposed to invoke spirits or send you to an alternate reality all kinds of crazy stuff there's there's hundreds of those and so that i've just really enjoyed um trying some of those out and documenting the processes yeah and, what I like about that video is you just, it's just a video of you doing the challenge. You're just like, yeah. all right, I'm going to do it. And then you're yeah. just like, nothing, nothing happens. You have a no. great line. I didn't write it down, but it was something to the effect of, um, it didn't summon any monsters except like the psychological ones. Right. Right. It yeah. didn't summon paranormal monsters, but yeah. it did summon psychological monsters. Right. And I think that's the key to a lot of these things because they are crafted in really clever ways that, it takes advantage of every human fear, you know, any sort of fear response that, that you're capable of. Like they try to design these things in a way that will trigger all of those. And so you're going to have um, a crazy experience. And it's easy to see, uh, since I've tried some of these things, why people do interpret them as being some sort of spiritual encounters. Uh, it's totally, um, if, if you weren't a skeptical person, like it, it's totally believable. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I think... I think that's something interesting because, you know, a lot of the skeptic YouTube content I see, you know, we, we talk a lot about broader religious beliefs and stuff, but like this idea of the paranormal is almost intrinsic to a lot of religious beliefs. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. most religions out there believe in some form of spirits or, 
or 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 something outside of this world or something even if it's a god or something like you can count that as a spirit i guess something that's just beyond human perception um and uh it's it's interesting how you can find sort of the parallels in multiple cultures through that why do you think that is because i have some ideas um a a lot of it is is just um when you you don't have the knowledge of um Mm. like certain Men- mental um states or, or or mental issues you know um somebody is, they start going you know um they start acting abnormally and and they assume that it's some sort of demon or something when really they're having some sort of psychological issue mm. and so that's one thing and then other things are just um it's i don't know why but we've always been scared of the dark and when you don't know what's out there when you don't you know you don't have satellites across the entire planet. You don't have the whole planet mapped out. Your mind just wanders because you, you don't know what's out there. You know, we have the privilege now of knowing that there aren't, you know, um, boogie monsters in the uh, shadows. But especially back in the day when a lot of these religions came about, they didn't know that. And, and so a yeah. lot of it is just um, is just due to ignorance. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think of it as twofold. I think depending on who you ask. There's somebody out there that's going to say, well, all of these experiences that people describe must pr- must be evidence that there is something out there. Or there's another camp that says, well, this is actually the result of evolution in some ways. Our emotions help us survive. Uh, and so if we feel fear, then right. we won't, you know, go out into the dark where there's a predator or something, you know. Um, and that's yeah. why, yeah, it's a fight or flight kind of response in us even when there's nothing there, right? Yeah, it's like, it's actually reasonable to a certain level, you know. Yeah. Even being afraid of uh, demons or whatever being out in the dark at night, they they may not actually be demons or or monsters or whatever. But, you know, that was, um, that was an, that was enough to keep, you know, your children from going out at night or you wondering, you know, it it kept kept people safe. Um, It worked. Yeah, I um, I, I was actually reading a book this week. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, called Tribe by uh, Sebastian Younger, and and part mm-hmm. of it is talking about Native American or American Indian, depending on you know which terminology you use, just different tribes and how they. Really, the book was about PTSD, but one of the things they talk about was like the Skinwalker phenomenon and this idea yeah. of like a changed person um because of the experiences that they've had or something that um kind of makes them impure in some ways um and i thought that was interesting because i think that ties into like this idea of demons possessing people i mean i think we also have this idea that um uh, you know in, in the context of the book it was talking about how oh this was actually a reflection of ptsd and how people were changed in these cultures which was interesting but i do think people have a sense of oh we need these kinds of rituals to help keep us safe and mm-hmm. if we keep we we know that we're safe because we've been doing the rituals and nothing has happened to us you know like i think it's right. that kind of mentality yeah. of well we always have to do it because it's tradition and it's how that we've kind of understood the world and i think that's how a lot of these myths about sort of paranormal experiences come from and the myths kind of inform our lens of how to see stuff you know if i go out in the woods and i think i see bigfoot that's because i know about bigfoot stories You know what I mean? So I'm going to fill the gaps a little bit. I think that's what we find with a lot of these paranormal experiences too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. So like, do you have any plans with the channel right now? Besides the, I mean, are you going to keep doing the paranormal stuff? What other kinds of stuff do you talk about on the channel? Yeah. So I talk about mostly religion and religious culture and more recently, uh, paranormal type stuff. Um, that's probably going to be, that's probably the niche I'll keep on my channel. Um, I, I have other interests, but they'll probably never pop up on this channel. Or, yeah, I might create another channel in the future for other stuff that wouldn't interest this specific audience. But for now, uh, the direction though is um, paranormal stuff and religious stuff. I talk a lot about religious culture. That's how I started my channel. Um, mm-hmm. I, I live in Alabama. It's in the Bible Belt. So most of my videos, especially all of the first ones, they're in response to things I hear from uh, people around here, um, Christians and conservatives and whatnot. Um, So as long as I live in the Bible Belt, I will continue to make uh, 
videos responding to the rhetoric and the beliefs that people have around here. Um, yeah, as someone who's been to Alabama several times, you could bless your heart. You could make a lifetime. You could you could make a living just talking about the the BS people say around there. And this comes from a guy that lives in Texas, but you know, like no. Texas isn't really like people understand. Texas isn't really the South. You don't really get to the South, I think, until you go like Louisiana, Alabama, Arkansas. Right. To me, that's more representative of that kind of culture. Texas is kind of its own thing with its own mythology. But, you know, I'll, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if you'd agree with that. But, like, I, I, I find that it is fascinating that in an age where we do have as much access to resources, as much access to, you know, just the information that we have, that you still kind of find a lot of these folk beliefs online, no less, of people sharing yeah these stories about these rituals. And I imagine a lot of it, like if, if we're talking about from Reddit and stuff, it's probably from kids, you know, it's probably kids yeah. trying to scare each yeah. other, but how much, I mean, how many amateur ghost hunter groups are out there, you know, really trying to find stuff. And, um, it's funny cause we live in an age now where if there was evidence, we could see it now, it should be uploaded somewhere. But at the same time, we have tons of fake videos now too, because we have, our technology develops. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. About yeah, it. that's what I've noticed too. Because I've been looking on YouTube. I, I, I don't know if I'm really stepping into the paranormal community or not. But I was kind of looking to see who's out there, you know. Um, and almost everything I found on YouTube, as far as channels dedicated to ghost hunting, uh, paranormal investigation, they're all fake. They all fake their videos. Because um, mm -hmm. I saw a few who had done uh, some of the rituals from the uh, Three Kings subreddit, and they all faked them. Uh, which was kind of disappointing. So there might yeah. be some real ones out there, but um, they definitely don't um, rise to the top. I think that a lot of adults don't realize there's actually a market for this on YouTube with kids. Um, and recently, a guy named Jay Station um, yes. kind of got yeah. in trouble with this because he did a Ouija board thing. He, he, like the title of these videos are always like me doing the Ouija board at 3 a.m. talking to, and he would do like whatever celebrity had just died right yeah. um and he also like did his ex-girlfriend and she yeah. was still alive <laughs> that yeah, he, people he found that out faked her death to yeah. do a ouija board video um yeah yeah um yeah it's just like <laughs> bizarre bizarre that, that's stuff. the that's the paranormal community i guess right now um yeah, well, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, those videos get millions of views. I think yeah, it's just kids it's that ridiculous. share that stuff and they watch the ads and then that just get brings the creators money. But it's just like, I mean, I don't know. Like how I, I understand a, a kid getting tricked by that. But there's all there's got to be somebody like our age that's looking at that and being like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, like Probably, probably. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, don't tell everybody else that I'm I'm getting into this market because I want to kind of get in first. You, I'm the you first get skeptical, uh, what, <laughs> skeptical who would you, paranormal. Who would you contact with a Ouija board at 3 a.m.? Who would you want to talk to? Um, Carl I talked Sagan. like Carl Sagan. I I was gonna yeah. say Mr. Rogers. That'd probably be a but, pleasant conversation, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe if, Alan Watts. Alan Watts. That'd be scary. If I feel like out of all the spirits that I would be afraid of getting haunted by Alan Watts would be the freakiest because Probably. he would whisp he'd whisper something about Zen Buddhism in my ear at like three in the morning. And I, yeah. I'd, and there would be background music while he's yeah, talking. <laughs> there'd be background music and, um, some sort of lo-fi hip hop remix playing. Ooh, yeah. 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 It'd be great. Um, so yeah, like a lot of BS, maybe somebody will call in and tell us about, um, their paranormal experience and how they know it's real. That'd I hope so. Yeah. That'd be fun. But like, as far as right now, like I, I just, I don't know. I, even when I was a Christian, I think I was pretty skeptical mm. about ghost shows and stuff. Um, because they were all just very inconsistent in the rules of how these ghosts worked, you know, like sometimes you yeah. can see them. Sometimes it's just voices. Sometimes it's energies. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are with this. You know, you can see them until you get the camera out and then right. nobody sees them. You know? Right. And nobody sees them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mm -hmm. watched those shows a little bit when I was a Christian and I, I, I did believe it. Um, but um, it, it was kind of mixed with the denomination I was in. A lot of them didn't believe in that kind of stuff. They didn't believe in even like the charismatic Christians. But 
I, it, it wasn't part of the doctrine. So I, I never really knew what to think about ghosts and stuff like that. I just knew I was told to stay away from, you know, that kind of stuff. So I did. Yeah, I grew up around a lot of Baptist kids and they were definitely more afraid of demons than I was. Mm -hmm. I think that was kind of a common thing, which was just kind of like, I don't know, like I haven't been hurt by one yet. Like I'm still pretty good, right. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, very, very funny how we incorporate stuff, which by the way, like it is crazy to think about too. Like, oh yeah, like that's in the Bible. Like there's ghosts in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. That's a thing, you know, um, people don't talk about that. They talk about demons, but just now nah, there's ghosts too. That's a thing. Which I wonder if that was an just an Old Testament thing, if that's kind of how some Christians rationalize that. I'm not sure. Um, My, I, 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 unless we're talking about the Holy Ghost now, Dallas, I think yeah. we're just talking about, you know, Old Testament. Because I remember there's a story of the the ghost hand coming out. Um, was in the book of Daniel. I think that's in the book of Daniel. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, one of the prophets was brought back from the dead. Uh, was that? King Saul um, had gone to a um, oh, what was she called? Um, some sort of a, a, a witch and um, communicated with Elijah or Elisha um, after he had uh, after he was dead. Um, yeah, so I know there's that one ghost story, like specifically like an actual ghost story, but it was in the Old Testament. Um, there's also like the visions. I mean, I guess if we're talk counting New Testament, right? When they go on like uh, um, when they when they have the Sermon on the Mount, they they have like uh, depending on the gospel, I think there are the visions of like the old prophets. I think that happens yeah, uh, in yeah. John, right? Which that's kind of like a ghost thing. Like if I saw, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's supposed to be like their souls from heaven or something or maybe not i don't know it's very bizarre very strange i don't know i could uh, probably talk to somebody who knows more about that than you or i but i think we should talk to some callers what do you think yeah let's do it cool